All right, so they said this kit came with trauma shears. So most of this kit that they are saying, look at all the stuff we have in this kit. Most of it's just Band-Aids that you can buy cheaper somewhere else. I bought this contractor's first aid kit off of Amazon. We're gonna open it up and see how it compares to some other first aid kits that are out there on the market. Today we're educating you on some of the first aid kits on the market. And if you find any of this information valuable, we would really appreciate a thumbs up or a like uh, on this video. That would really help us out. If you have any questions regarding some of the stuff we're going over today, leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Make sure your notification's on so you're alerted of any future videos we post. All right, let's get to it. Well, today we're gonna take a look at a contractor's first aid kit that I bought off Amazon and compared it to our Minuteman first aid kit, which is roughly the same size as far as the case goes. We're gonna take a look at these two and figure out what's inside each one, what's really gonna save a life, and which one is more valuable. So the old saying goes, you get what you pay for, and that is absolutely right when it comes to first aid kits. I have a lot of people that tell me my kits are too expensive and even a $30 tourniquet is too expensive because you can buy an entire first aid kit for $30. And that's about what I spent on this guy right here off Amazon. So um, a lot of times when you're shopping on Amazon, you see a kit and it talks about how many pieces are in this kit. 200, 300, 1,000 pieces for only $45. Well, do you know what the majority of those pieces are? Band-Aids, and yes, Band-Aids are helpful, but I don't want a first aid kit that just has Band-Aids. When we're stocking a first aid kit, especially for a contractor, we wanna make sure that we have the tools on hand to be able to take care of the injuries that may be sustained in that job. If you're on a job site doing construction, you have power tools, you have sharp objects, you have heights, ladders, uh, potential for falls. There's a lot of things at play here and a lot of potential for injury. So simply having a bunch of Band-Aids in a box is not necessarily the best safety plan you can have. Now, OSHA says that workplaces must conduct themselves in safe-ish environments. Well, on top of that, they say that there are some minimum standards for a first aid kit to be on a job site or in a workplace. So these people, that put these kits together will take that minimum standard for a small workplace for two to three people for some basic supplies and they'll build a kit out that meets that list. And as they build this kit out, they start marketing this to the public that have no idea what they need and say, this meets OSHA standards, buy my kit. It's however many hundreds of pieces in this little box. It's cheap, we'll mail it to you, Amazon Prime, you'll get it the next day. What could go wrong? So before I rant any more about the price to pieces ratio, let's break these open and let's actually see what's inside these kits. All right, so first thing, I'm gonna open up this contractor's first aid kit. This is made by First Aid Only. It's an interesting brand. And it's a 25 person kit. I looked up the OSHA regulations and the list that was comparable to the list of contents in here says that that list was good for two to three people, but apparently this is good for 25 people. Meets federal OSHA requirements, and there's a code number there. State requirements may vary. So this satisfies the OSHA requirements, and I guess the OSHA requirements for 25 people. So we have 100 Band-Aids, so hope no one needs more than four Band-Aids apiece. All right, so let's go ahead and crack this open. So this is in a small metal lunchbox size container. Um, and we've got all the stuff inside, pretty neatly organized, one little divider in there. Everything's laid out, pretty easy to get to, no complaints there. So we got some gloves in here. Uh, they packaged all the gloves inside of one to kind of hold them together. So we got four gloves here. So this is good for two incidents. That's fine for a small little kit. If we use them, this is two providers caring for one person, then we can restock after that. So I think that's adequate. Uh, we've got some conforming gauze roll. We've got a single three inch by four yard roll of gauze. So we've got one roll of gauze in this entire kit. So that's not even enough to bandage one good laceration. 
Um, it will bandage a small laceration, a small wound, but only one of them. All right, so let's see what else we got. We got a whole stack of antiseptic towelettes. So there's a bunch of these. I think the box says there are 42. So we have 42 of these in there for 25 people. All right, we got a little emergency first aid guide. This is great for lay people that may need to clean up a wound. Um, they don't really know what they're doing and now they have a little reference guide they can look at. Not for life-threatening injuries, not for professionals, but for someone that simply needs to look at, um, hey, I got a bad wound. How bad is it? What should I do? Um, it's got some basic stuff in there. So I think that's good. It does have infant CPR in there. I guess it's better to have it, but I think if you had an infant that needed CPR, looking it up in a manual would probably be the last thing I'd be doing. All right, let's see what else we got here. So we got an instant cold pack, one instant cold pack. Could be beneficial if you have a uh, sprain, put that on there. Um, we're on a job site, so I'm probably gonna be pulling ice out of the cooler rather than using an instant cold pack, but um, we at least have this in our kit. All right, let's talk about this. We have a single triangle bandage. So triangle bandages are great tools. They're usually used in pairs. So if you do a sling and a swath, you use one for a sling to hold the arm, and then you use one for a sw swath. So you hold that arm to the body now with a second one. Um, if you have a SWAT T tourniquet or something else, you can use that to help tie the arm up. You could even use some rope or webbing to tie that arm as well. Um, but just having one triangle bandage doesn't do a whole lot. You could sling it a little bit, but it's not fully secured. So we need to add something else to that to fully secure that arm to try to immobilize it if we do have a fracture of the clavicle, shoulder, basically anywhere on the arm or shoulder area, uh, we're gonna wanna sling that to stabilize it. So, but we've got one in there. All right, so they boast that you got tweezers in here. These are plastic tweezers. I don't know how well you're actually gonna be able to get little splinters and stuff out with plastic tweezers, so I'm gonna call that a fail. Um, I don't even want these taking up space in my kit. All right, so they said this kit came with trauma shears. <laughs> I'm gonna try not to laugh. So these are our, these are our trauma shears. You can cut little band-aids with this. This would be useful for cutting a little bit of gauze if you had to clean something up, but there's so little gauze in here, you could just wrap the rest of it real quick and you'd be done, so. Moving on, first aid cream. All right, we got a little bit of first aid burn cream, not for life-threatening burns, for little ouchies. It hurts a little bit, we're gonna throw a little cream on there, soothe the pain a little bit. We got those. We have some neomycin antibiotic ointment. Looks like we have five, six, up, oh, another burn cream. It's like we have six antibiotic ointments. These are good to have. These are very good if you have a cut, you can throw them in the cut and that starts killing any infection. Uh, so hopefully that infection doesn't get any larger, doesn't spread, doesn't become a bigger issue. So definitely, definitely worthwhile to have in your kit. Six of them, probably good for a little first aid kit um, and then just restock them as needed. So no gripe there. Sterile gauze pads. We have four packs of two. So there's two in each one. These are three by threes instead of four by fours. Nothing wrong with the size, that's fine. Um, if you're absorbing a lot of blood, this is not gonna get you very far, but for some basic cuts and scratches, nothing wrong with these. They're sterile, they're clean in there. Um, you can tear these open, and use these on a wound. A single trauma pad, um, and this is actually a fairly small trauma pad. Five by nine, but it's a lot thinner than the ones I'm used to. Um, it's, there's not a whole lot of absorbent quality to this, but there's at least one trauma pad. So if you had something a little bit bigger than a small cut, maybe a medium sized cut, we could throw that on there as well. Okay, so they had a roll of tape. Um, I'll, I'll give them this, it is a roll of tape. It's like a fabric tape. It's very thin, It's probably about half inch, um, but they give you a little bit of tape so you can tape your bandage up. All right, let's talk band-aids. So we got a couple weird shaped band-aids. We have the uh, fingertip band-aids. While not necessary, these do come in handy sometimes, especially if you're working, you put a Band-Aid on and it keeps falling off and you really, it's getting in the way and you kind of want to keep blood off of all the stuff you're working on and you want to hold that Band-Aid. The fingertip ones can curve around the finger and can help hold that in place. So no gripes there, they put those in there, so props to them. Um, now we have knuckle finger bandage, same thing, just something that's a little bit different, help hold it on the knuckle. Um, I've been on job sites and you start bleeding and next thing you know, you know you're kind of dripping blood and so you got to do something to keep that so you're not making a mess. So if that helps you be able to continue working and keep um, your finger from getting infected and keep some of that blood from uh, getting all over your project, then go for it. 
Um, we have a whole roll of small band-aids. And while band-aids are a frequently used item and something you should have a lot of, there's nothing wrong with having 100 band-aids in your first aid kit for 25 people. That's totally acceptable. But what I don't like is when you go shopping for a first aid kit and they're boasting of a 178 piece first aid kit for 25, $35. And what you get out of 178 pieces, 100 of those are a roll of Band-Aids that you can buy at Kroger for, or the drugstore for five bucks, I don't, I don't, 10 bucks. So most of this kit that they're saying, look at all the stuff we have in this kit. Most of it's just Band-Aids that you can buy cheaper somewhere else. So when you're looking at a first aid kit, make sure that you are getting good value. Now, a lot of people pay for convenience and I get that. I can buy one kit, it's got stuff in it. I don't know what's in it. I don't really know how to use it, but I bought a kit, I've got it. It's peace of mind and it's convenient for me. I don't have to go build a kit. The only problem is when you get in a bind, you open that kit up, you have no idea what to do. You're looking through this manual and you're using a whole bunch of band-aids for someone that's severely injured. There's no tourniquet, there's no packing gauze, there's no chest seals. You can improvise some of that. You could improvise some chest seals and do some basic splinting and stuff here. Um, but I mean, really we're gonna be tying a splint up with this and some gauze and then taping this in place and our splint's gonna be something improvised from something we can find around us. Um, we're gonna have a hard time making an improvised uh, tourniquet with this. Really don't recommend that. Commercial tourniquet on a construction site would be a good deal. And we really don't have, I mean, we could pack a wound with this. We could pack a wound with triangle bandage too. We're just not going to get very far. But again, you have to know how to do those things um, in order to be able to do that. So if you buy a first aid kit off of Amazon, um, nothing wrong with that. Make sure that it has good quality materials in it and that you're getting good value for the money you're spending. Um, just because you bought a $35 kit instead of a $100 $50 kit, $200 kit, $80 kit, whatever it is, you may not be getting good value for that cheaper product just because there's simply nothing of value that you're getting with it. So just watch that when you're purchasing it. Now a similar kit to this contractor kit, in, as far as size goes, something that would fit in about the same place, is our uh, Minuteman first aid kit. This is something that we put together. So it's in a rugged Pelican case. It's waterproof, so this would be perfect for a job site. Um, is it OSHA compliant? To be honest, before I started prepping for this video, I didn't know what OSHA required in their kits. That's something I should probably do a little bit more looking into um, and really look and see if we can modify this a little bit to make this OSHA compliant so that if people need something for their job site that's OSHA compliant, we at least have something that's worthwhile that has tourniquets and massive hemorrhage supplies, but also is compliant with some of the OSHA supplies. So let's open this up and then let's compare this to the contractor's kit that we have here. All right, so as we open this up, on the first tray, we have our smaller supplies. We have some Advil, Benadryl, Tylenol. We have our Band-Aids. Um, we've got about a dozen Band-Aids, so you could throw more in there. Um, we have many modules we sell on our website as well that have more Band-Aids in them. If you just need a ton of Band-Aids, contact us in our contact form on the website or uh, contact us through YouTube. Um, we'd be happy to hook you up with some more band-aids. There's some steri strips in here as well. There's large band-aids, small band-aids, so a little bit of an assortment there. You have the antibiotic ointment here as well. You have some uh, alcohol prep pads. You have some sting relief pads. Again, nothing life-saving, but they may help relieve um, a little bit of the pain if you get stung on the job site. So all of that's in here. Right on top, easy to get to. Now up top, we have kind of our moderate injury. So we're gonna move into some of the gauze and stuff. So as I open this up, we do have our gloves. So we have gloves that are rolled up. We have two pairs of those. So those are sitting here in the lid. Same thing as our other kit, two pairs. These are the trauma shears you get with this kit. Okay, these are the X shears. So a little bit of difference here. So these will not only cut the bandaging to be able to dress a wound, these will cut off leather boots, motorcycle boots, uh, car hearts, jeans, jackets, heavy jackets, uh, whatever you have to, to be able to get to the wound so you can start dressing it. Um, on top of that, it'll cut through wires and anything that someone may be entangled. On a construction site, somebody could fall, they fall in a pile of wires or debris. You may have to cut through some of that in order to get to them, get them out, they may be tangled up. Then you have to cut clothes off to be able to get to the injury. Then. You still have some shears to be able to cut the gauze 
once you start bandaging that injury. So solid pair of shears here. All right, we have an emergency blanket. So anybody that's in shock or bleeding out, um, we want to be able to keep them warm. If the body uh, starts to cool off, that's bad for not only blood clotting, um, but also for uh, general hypothermia of the patient. So the patient's gonna be much better off if we get their, keep their body temperature up. So we have two rolls of gauze as opposed to the one roll in the other kit. We have four by fours as opposed to the three by threes. And we have two in each one and four of these as well. Um, instead of the little burn gels, we have a single uh, burn tech dressing. So this is a dressing that has some of that um, gel on one side. It cools the wound, um, it protects it, um, and keeps it uh, as clean as possible. Um, and then you just wrap this with gauze on top of it, hold that in place for minor to moderate wounds. You wouldn't want to use this on any third degree or full thickness wounds, but it's great for something. Somebody bu bumps up against a muffler of a tractor or something on the job site, um, and you can throw this on there. It'll help ease some of that pain, wrap it with some gauze and call it a day. All right, now in the bottom, we have our severe injury, massive hemorrhage down here in the bottom. So if someone is on a job site and they get nicked with a circular saw, they get uh, hit by equipment or something, and we have severe arterial bleeding or penetrating trauma to the chest, this is going to call for more than a big roll of band-aids. We're going to need something to be able to control major bleeding. So we have a tourniquet that we can get to very quickly. Um, I would recommend when you get these kits, take this out of the plastic. This is a kit that is stocked and ready to go for us to sell, so it's still in the plastic. Take it out of the plastic, because that's one more thing that you have to overcome if you have to put this on someone in an emergency. We have both Quick Clot, which is a Z-folded gauze that's impregnated with this uh, Quick Clot combat gauze. Um, this Quick Clot that's in there will help speed up the clotting process. So if you have a gaping wound that's bleeding, put your finger in there, hold pressure directly on the area, open this up and pack it in there, fill that entire cavity with a quick clot. If there's still a hole or a secondary injury that you have to pack as well, we've got an additional packing gauze that you can back that up in this kit as well. Then once you have that packing gauze in place, we have a pressure bandage that you can throw on there that helps hold that in place and provide some pressure at that area of injury. Now down here in the bottom, we have two chest seals. So this is a twin pack of uh, hyphen vintage chest seals. Any penetrating trauma to the chest, we wanna cover that with an occlusive dressing like plastic or a chest seal. That allows the lungs to be able to expand and to fill back up um, and helps prevent a tension pneumothorax, which is a collapsed lung um, that is now affecting other organs inside the chest as well. So any sucking chest wound from penetrating trauma to the chest, we wanna make sure that we have an occlusive dressing, whether that's a piece of plastic with duct tape or something like these hyphen vent chest seals. These commercial chest seals just make it that much faster, tear it open, stick it on, and you're done, rather than having to find some duct tape and kind of improvise something. All right, so hopefully that breakdown helps to explain a little bit more about some of the marketing behind, hey, I've got a first aid kit with hundreds of pieces for only $20. But is it really what you need on a job site when someone gets injured? You don't want to find out that you don't have an adequate kit once someone's injured. So take a look at the kit you have now. Make sure that it's going to be suitable for your needs. You don't have to buy a kit from us. We have stocked kits, but at least there are a lot of vendors out there. So find something that works for you and make sure the money you're spending on a first aid kit is good value, even if it ends up being a little bit more for that kit. So these two kits, this Minuteman kit is $245 on our website, significantly more than the uh, $30 kit you can find on Amazon. But again, as you saw, we had a box full of Band-Aids and a metal tin. We've got a durable waterproof case to protect everything. We've got a uh, tourniquet. The tourniquet itself is 30 bucks. So this right here is the exact same amount of money as I spent on the entire kit over here. Uh, we've got Quick Clot, which is fairly pricey. Um, in there, we've got your burn dressings. We've got a uh, assortment of different band-aids, gauzes, packing gauze, pressure bandage. Um, we've got some really durable shears. You buy these, you will likely not have to ever replace the shears in there. You can use these over and over again, unlike the, uh, the big shears in the other kit. Well, that concludes this video. And even if you don't go buy one of our kits, I hope this at least opened your eyes to some of the marketing gimmicks and even just some of the marketing 
uh, for some of these first aid kits out there on the web. So make sure you do due diligence to investigate what you're purchasing. Make sure that you are getting good value for your money. And as always, stay vigilant and stay safe.